Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to proceed with the thawing of the Cold War. Um, in 1953, Joseph Stalin died, uh, and uh, the Soviets ruled by uh, a presidium, which is an executive committee for about three years. Uh, no one person uh, had emerged uh, after Stalin. Uh, to become the general secretary of the Communist Party and therefore the premier of the Soviet Union. But after a period of about three years, Khrushchev really emerged as uh, the uh, premier. And um, of all the Soviet leaders that I've studied, and I, I don't know for sure because I, I've never met them, um, but um, Khrushchev was one of the uh, most reasonable uh, he um, shifted Soviet policy from uh, the Stalinist stance, which was that capitalism and communism are incompatible, that war is inevitable, and it's Soviet policy to spread worldwide revolution. Um, Khrushchev was much more conciliatory than that. Rather than talking about inevitable confrontation, um, he talked about peaceful coexistence. And so what we see um, almost immediately after uh, he took the reins of leadership was a, a thaw in the Cold War. And that thaw really uh, culminated with Khrushchev's visit to uh, the United States where he and President Eisenhower um, uh, got along quite well. Uh, he first arrived in Washington, and then he uh, visited Iowa, where he was very impressed by the cornfields there and the enormous crop yields that the Midwest was producing. He went on to Los Angeles, and there's a story about when he was in Los Angeles, he wanted to visit Disneyland and ride the rides there and meet Mickey Mouse and uh, the people who were liaising to organize his visit uh, essentially contact, uh, contacted Walt Disney and asked if he would be able to um, visit the park and ride the roller coasters and the rides and meet Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney reportedly said no no, 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 no. He can't ride my rides because of what he did in Hungary. Of course, this was three years after the Hungarian uprising uh, in which Imre Nagy tried to liberalize Hungary. And um, of course, Khrushchev ordered Soviet tanks to invade Hungary, uh, crushing the Hungarian revolution. And Disney was very upset by that. Walt Disney was very upset by that because uh, he had Hungarian ancestors and felt a large degree of solidarity um, with the Hungarian dissidents who had been, uh, in many cases, killed as a result of their wish to uh, liberal liberalize uh, Hungary. Nevertheless, uh, the summit uh, between Eisenhower and uh, Khrushchev in 1959 uh, was seen as a su success and Eisenhower really had high hopes that he could bring an end to the Cold War before he left office in 1961. Um, but sadly, that, that was not the case. That was premature. Um, the United States had launched missions with a U-2 spy plane, which was a plane that um, flew very high in the sky on the edge of outer space. Um, and um, Eisenhower was nervous about it because if the U-2 was discovered or shot down by a Soviet missile, uh, they would surely learn that these missions were spy missions, and that would cause the Cold War to, to refreeze. It would cause an atmosphere of distrust between the Soviet Union and the United States. Uh, so Eisenhower 
communicated his anxieties to the CIA that we need to stop these spy missions, that um, they're endangering this uh, peace process that we're really making great progress with, uh, with regards to the Soviets. And uh, the CIA pushed back and they said, Mr. President, the intelligence that we are getting from these U-2 missions is invaluable. It is so good, the quality of the intelligence. We're seeing every aspect of Soviet life from these photographs that these um, planes were taking, telegraphic, or telescopic rather, photographs that these planes were taking. So Eisenhower um, agreed to approve one last U-2 mission over the Soviet Union um, in May of 1960. He said, that's it. We're going to stop the program um, after this one last mission. And so in May of 1960, um, Francis Gary Powers, a pilot, took off from um, an air base in Pakistan, which was a U.S. ally at the time, and flew into Soviet airspace, uh, began his mission, and of course the Soviets had developed missiles that could fly um, even higher than the U-2. Um, remember Sputnik, uh, 1957, uh, three years before the U-2 uh, missions uh, 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 took place. And so, of course, they developed a surface-to-air missile that um, hit the U-2. Uh, the pilot, Camp Francis Gary Powers, survived, and they essentially... Um, forced a confession from him that it was not a weather plane as the United States claimed, that indeed it was a spy mission. And that, of course, caused the Cold War um, to refreeze. Um, the United States um, in 1961 had a new president and he gave the order to go ahead with a plan that had been created by the Eisenhower administration um, to um, train Cuban refugees for an invasion at the Bay of Pigs. And of course, the Bay of Pigs invasion was a, a terrible failure. Um, the, when they, the Cuban refugees who were trying to topple Castro's regime in Cuba, arrived at the Bay of Pigs, they were met with the Russian Air Force and, of course, were forced to surrender immediately. Um, that signaled to the Russians that the United States was determined uh, to rid Cuba of Castro and his communist regime, which prompted the Soviets to place um, nuclear-tipped missiles in short-range nuclear-tipped ballistic missiles uh, in Cuba uh, and would give them first strike capability of uh, launching a missile from Cuba that would deliver a nuclear warhead and destroy an American city uh, potentially in less than 10 minutes. So um, the Cuban Missile Crisis happened over this. Uh, the Kennedy administration made it clear that the United States would go to war if the Soviets didn't remove their missiles. This is the point at which the Soviet Union and the United States came the closest uh, in the history of the Cold War to a nuclear conflict. Fortunately, after 13 days, cooler heads prevailed. Um, the Kennedy administration agreed to remove American missiles that were stationed in uh, Turkey if the Soviets would remove their missiles from Cuba and if the United States pledged never to invade Cuba. These developments um, disgraced Khrushchev and um, the uh, executive committee of the Soviet Union the Politburo um, forced him into retirement and he spent the rest of his life 
as an unperson with regard to the Soviets, uh, as ridiculous as that sounds, as ridiculous as that sounds, they, they called him an, an unperson. Okay, that's a good um, place to stop. Uh, we will forge ahead with the Brezhnev era in just a few minutes.